Hi, this is Dr. Chris Doyle from Bentonville, Arkansas. Here we're demonstrating how important it is for meniscal trephination when repairing a radial split vertical complex tear of the medial meniscus. We really don't have access to get to this meniscus without trephinating the medial collateral ligament. So I've trephinated the medial collateral ligament to give us access. Now we can see this complex tear. So we've got a vertical component along the meniscal capsular junction. We have a radial split as we move towards the white-white zone. And looking at how the meniscus has lost its normal contour, we can only surmise that there's, at the very least, a horizontal cleavage plane tear in here, along with that second vertical component that's almost trying to become another radial split. So, we start out by first assessing the meniscus for repairability. This is a young patient. We know that this is a repairable tear. So we're going to ascertain the edges of the meniscal capsular junction tear, and then proceed with fixing this back to the meniscal capsular margin. So to give us room, we've trephinated the medial collateral ligament. As I'm probing, I can see that I actually need to go a little bit further here. And so we continue stress on the knee until I can get the medial compartment opened up adequately so that I can place my sutures. So we bring in our Nova Stitch Plus device. We're going to get all the way back to the meniscal capsular margin. I've actually trephinated underneath the medial meniscus and this allows my lower jaw to penetrate beneath the meniscus, get around the meniscal capsular junction, and then go ahead and pass my second suture more near the medial margin of the meniscus, or the central margin if you will. With my second suture captured in the upper jaw, now I can go ahead and tie my meniscus back to the meniscal capsular junction. So you can see I like this stitch. I'm going to go ahead and trephinate after tying this one to pass another stitch. But on the video, you'll actually watch when I try and introduce the first pass, there's too much tension, too much resistance on the needle. And so the bottom of the cartridge will actually extend out from underneath the device. This tells me that I don't have enough capsular penetration to get the lower jaw actually through and I'm meeting significant resistance. So you'll actually watch me blow a stitch on this pass because... I didn't have enough of a window trephinated. So if you're meeting a lot of resistance, you want to pull back out, go back in, retrephinate that, make sure that you can get that lower jaw through, and then go ahead and pass up and around, and then go ahead and pass your central stitch. So you'll see this lower jaw. Now watch it. See the cartridge is pushing out from underneath the device? That tells me there's too much resistance there now. And this is learned from experience. Once I retrephinate it, then I can get a good pass in there with another cartridge and then get all the way around it. So I've retrephinated, gotten a much better pass because I trephinated much more along the meniscus itself, penetrating through and around. And now I've got my stitch around and I'm able to sew this back to the margin. Once I've approximated my meniscal capsular margin in this case, then I'll go ahead and pass some side to side stitches. I pass a little bit longer and oblique because I also think that I've got an internal split within the meniscus right here. So I want to reach past that to try and compress that meniscal capsular junction tear down, as well as compress the internal split within the meniscus. So there's my much wider split around my meniscus tear itself to compress the femoral and tibia lamina together. So once we've got a nice repair, I'll go ahead and cut my suture tail. So you can see we've got excellent approximation of the radial split, vertical split, what we assume is a internal horizontal cleavage and a meniscal capsular junction tear.